Inverse God. And uh, if you've known me for any length of time, you probably know that I'm not a real big fan of legalism, not a real big fan of, you know, religions who think, hey, we've got it all right, everybody else is wrong, you have to be a part of what we got, got going on to earn your salvation. And I think God, we said, absolutely, the religion was meant for our benefit, yes. not to bind our souls to eternity. So I really think that it's something that oftentimes, and here's the thing about religion, people don't even realize how quickly religion can take the, take the reins. Um, you know, even things like atheism can become a religion, you know, when, when you when you just follow such a, such a rigid um, belief system where it doesn't even conform to reality. And I think that that's a lot of what religion is. It's conformity to a belief pattern, but not necessarily conformity to God. You know, there's a, there's a big difference between those two things. So you know, I hate I hate a lot of I hate a lot of things. If if I'm honest, I hate really shallow music. I hate the majority of what's on the radio. I have yet to hear an Ariana Grande song. I've never once heard a song by her. And what's more, I don't want to hear a song from her. No, I uh, I saw an article that just I didn't go looking for it. It just popped up in the news thing, and uh, evidently she had her I don't know what they call. They're basically like um, the 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 guys that teleport her around, transport her around. And what are they called? Uh, kind of. She had them carrying her around because she was too tired to walk. I was like, oh, that made me throw up a little bit. Um, you know, I, I hate I hate stuff like that. It's like you've got two legs, lady, use them. You know, when you when you get so much money that you start thinking that it makes you better than other people. Um, I also hate when cats poop in my yard. I don't own a cat. Why should I have to deal with that? Uh, I, I also hate when my dog eats it, because you know your dog does do that. Yes. He goes outside and he comes in and pretends like, hey, guess what I got? Come closer. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then they get it on your hands and you're like, ah, what's happened? <laughs> I, I, these are things that I hate. Right. I hate the lack of healthy dialogue in most of the media right now. Mm -hmm. If you have any opinion that different goes against, you know, the this is what we all have to believe, then it's like you're treated like, you, like you're just the worst of the worst. I, I hate driving through construction. I mean, these are things that I hate. And uh, my point is that we all have things that we hate. And uh, w with legalistic people, with religion, religion tells us how we look is most important. It demands that people respect and people respect us and that they honor us. And what we're going to be talking about tonight, religion also invents new standards that people have to follow. And then chooses what sin is okay for that person, but not okay for you. As, as an example, um, I grew up in a church that every single Sunday they talk about, talked about homosexuality. Every single Sunday. I'm not joking. Now, I believe that, you know, yes, we should talk about sin and talk about not doing it and those kinds of things. But when you get in the rut of just repeating the same thing every single week, ask me how many, how many people came to God at all the whole time I was there. None. All we ever got were religious people who hated, and I'm using that word very seriously, hated homosexuals. But do you know how, what percentage of that church gossiped behind other people's backs? 97%. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Religion religion, and, and legalism, it says your sin is wrong, but my sin is okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, here's, here's my scale, and I've, I've weighed that my sin is okay. But your sin, you definitely need to change that. And uh, legalism really does destroy us. It, it asks for more than, more than we thought it would. But the truth is, I know some people say, okay, so legalism gives us a bunch of rules so that we have to go the opposite of that. No, 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 no. God does have a standard, but he also gives us a list of things that he hates. Did you know that? People think, man, oh man, you know, if only like, you know, God would just tell us, you know, rank sins or something. Well, he doesn't really rank, rank sins, but he does spend a good section saying, these things I hate. And we're going to look at that. Uh, but before we do, I thought you'd get a kick out of this. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's not working for me. Ben. It's not working for me. I don't, is, it, is it pulling a, a, a check on us? Okay, sorry. Sorry. Do you want me to click it again? 
How about now? 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 Okay, all right. It's not that I think I'm better than you, it's just you're not as good as me. <laughs> that is religion summed up, I mean, in a picture. I just think that that's priceless. It's not that I think I'm better than you, it's just that you're not as good as me. And here's the thing about legalism, it really comes on us pretty quickly. One minute you're like, man, I'm just so glad to be saved, and then the next minute you're like, man, I'm glad I'm not like them. And then it's like overnight, and you're like, how did I get to that point of looking down my nose at someone else? How, how did that happen? Where, when, did I, when did I cross that line? And uh, so we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 6, starting in verse 16. There are six things which the Lord hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Spoiler alert, he's not going to say anything about homosexuality. When I first read this, it blew my mind away. I remember I was a kid, and remember I was going to church and mentioned homosexuality every single week. So I thought, okay, this is, this is a list of things that God hates. Surely homosexuality is going to be number one. But I got to the very end of the seven things, and it wasn't mentioned once. I was like, man, oh man. What am I missing here? And that kind of started up a whole other thing because, well, I'll get to that in a second. Now, he's going to list a few different things, and it's going to be in descending order. He's going to start with eyes and then tongue and so on and so forth. So first off, he says um, in verse 17, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness who utterly lies or utters lies, um, and one who spreads strife among the brothers. So we got a list of seven things. Let's let's go to the first one. It's arrogant or haughty eyes. This you could just say a prideful person. Um, what is a prideful person? Someone who's puffed up. Look at me. Someone who can't be told anything. Someone who can't get under authority. Someone who's rebellious. Someone who just they just I'm my own boss. This is what's right, and you're all wrong. Prideful person. You know, when, when somebody tries to tell you something and you, you can't be told what to do. Uh, the same thing on, on the list was tongues. Remember, descending order, so haughty eyes, lying tongue. Uh, so we could say, another way of saying that would be a liar. I mean, let's simplify this. Uh, someone who deceives, someone who manipulates people to get their own way. Um, someone who gossips because they are slandering, they're lying about other people. Or if they are telling the truth, they're saying it in a very deceitful way so as to sound more negative than it actually is. Um, not telling the truth. Um, not giving tithes can be lying because you're, you know, God has given you wealth and you are not, you are refusing it from him. Basically saying, God, this is my wealth. So that could be considered lying. Uh, another way, um, lying on your taxes. Being self-righteous because you're saying I am righteous and the truth is our righteousness is in God. So that means if we see the righteousness is from us, we're a liar. You see what I'm saying? So that kind of summarizes that pretty good. And the third one um, kind of had me scratch my head a little bit. Hands that shed innocent blood. What does that mean? Are we talking about murderers? Well, in a way, but not really. Another way of saying it is an oppressor. Um, hands, hands that shed innocent blood is more talking about people who take advantage of the weak. People who take advantage of, of people who aren't able to protect themselves. You know, um, so a good example of this would be uh, a man who uh, abuses his wife or girlfriend or whatever. That would be considered um, someone who oppresses. Um, let's see, another good example could be, um, okay, um, when you expect your kids to raise you. When you have kids and then they're expected to raise you because you want to keep going out and getting drunk, you want to keep doing drugs. So you're putting all the weight of parenting on them to raise you, flipping the thing on its on its, you're oppressing the weak. Someone who doesn't even know how to do that. Um, another good example, uh, sacrificing your kids for the sake of your own pleasure. Shacking up with people you aren't married to. Getting high every weekend. Putting kid, your kids in a dangerous situation. I know many people who have uh, dated people let them move in with them. And then that person who moved in molested the children. And the parent did nothing about it. So subjecting your kids to a dangerous situation, that would be oppressing the weak. Well, I didn't do it, and you didn't do anything about it either. See, they're, they're, that, that is, oppressing the weak isn't just the person who directly does it, it's also the person who allows the person to do it. See, that, did you know that not every single Canaanite was sacrificing their children on, on a, as a burnt offering? Not every single person was. 
the Tyre and Sidonians, they were doing a lot of it. Then there were a few other cities who were, do who were doing some of it, but none of them were doing anything about it either. You see what I mean? Now, did God hold them guiltless who didn't offer their children just because they sat by and watched other people who did watch their children? You see what I mean? So, um, not acting, another good, another good way of saying this is not acting on behalf of the poor. Well, I, I don't attack the poor, I just don't do anything about them. When you don't consciously act on behalf of the poor, the depressed, the broken, the weary, those people, when you, when, when you just act and live your life as though it's for yourself and you do nothing to ever reach out and extend, and extend a hand to help the broken people, that would be oppressing them to, because to ignore a problem is the same as to join in the problem. When you've got people who are broken, I give you, give you another example. Um, Actually, just within the past couple weeks, uh, many people who were broken emotionally and uh, almost spiritually, and then they had people texting and calling them, tearing them down more with stupid nonsense. None of it was true. They were just, it's like they were trying to go out of the way to tear the person down. See what I mean? Oppressing the poor. Oppressing the weak. When someone is weak, broken, needing help, and you don't just help them, you either excuse yourself from helping them or you attack them. Um, another, the next thing on the list is mentioned in verse 18, a heart that devises wicked plans. Now, before actually, before I go to this one, I just want to kind of bring this out. These first three things are usually combined in the person of a gossip. Someone who gossips usually does these three things. They're usual, usually prideful. They can't be told what to do. They usually lie and bend the truth. And they usually oppress people. See what I'm saying? Gossip usually do all those two things. Now, let's kind of tilt the scales, scales, scales over. Do homosexuals do all of these two things? No. No, they do not. See, being caught and stuck in an immoral life pattern is not the same as intentionally destroying people. Gossips intentionally destroy people. Homosexuals are simply confused. They're simply stuck in a sin. And they have Christians over here telling them, hey, you're going to hell. And they have the world over here saying, hey, you can live your life however you want. But that's not true. See what I mean? But out of the two things, what was it that God said that he hated? The heart. He hated this kind of heart. Notice that the things that he's talking about, he doesn't even necessarily point out any one specific thing. He points out a kind of character. Which begs the question, is he talking about seven individual peoples in this verse, or is he talking about a kind of character that exists within people? I think he's talking about the character. He's not talking about seven different people. Look, Because look at how it does. First off, he uses, he uses the descending analogy. Eyes, uh, tongue, heart, hands, heart. He goes, he goes, that kind of implies the wholeness of a, of a person's being. But then also, notice how he says this. There are six things which the Lord hates, not people, things. Yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness who utters lies, and one who spreads strife among brothers. Doesn't seem like he's talking about seven different kinds of people, or seven different people. It sounds like he's talking about one. So that takes us to the fourth personal or trait in the list. A heart that devises wicked plans. Now, if you notice, some of these things are actually directly contradicted by Jesus in his Beatitudes. Blessed are they who do this. Um, so here we have feet that rush to evil, which is a direct contrast with, 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 with what Jesus said. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. See, this is the exact opposite of someone who hungers and thirsts for righteousness. The exact opposite. This is someone who devises wicked plans, runs rapidly to evil. So what does it mean to devise wicked schemes? So another way of saying that is a lover of evil. Someone who just likes doing the wrong thing all the time. Uh, someone who goes from problem to problem. Someone who denies God's ways is, is a simple way of saying that. Someone who denies God's ways. Now, I will give you an example. There was someone who, uh, who abandoned their faith... But they did it while still calling themselves a Christian. Now, see, this is where we got to be careful. When someone's life does not consist 
is not consistent with what they profess, be careful. Be careful. Be careful of people who think that they're so much better than other people and gossip the whole time. Be careful about people who call themselves Christians but are living in a moral lifestyle. Be careful about these kinds of things because I guarantee you they will suck you in. I guarantee it. There's got to be a line where you love them without joining with them. Where you support them without supporting their life choices. You see what I'm saying? There, 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 has, there has to be a point where you cross that line. Um, so then they abandoned their family, they lied about their family, spread a bunch of nonsense, uh, sacrificed their kids for their own desires, blasphemed God while they were on their way out, manipulated other people to try and get them onto their side, went throughout the community trying to get everybody on their side for the whole conflict, um, got people who had no idea what was going on uh, to join in, got a divorce and then encouraged other people to get a divorce, actively opposed the church, the church and its leaders. Do you see the kind of person I'm talking about? Are you seeing a prideful person in that? Yes. Are you seeing a liar in that? Yes. Are you seeing an oppressor in that? Yes. Are you seeing a lover of evil in that? Yes. And my point is this. It can happen to anyone. It can happen to anyone. The, the great thing is about saying, look what they did, is you exempt yourself from letting the Holy Spirit check your heart. And then before you know it, this becomes you because you are too busy pointing out what everybody else was doing wrong and you weren't submitting your own heart to God to let him change you. And the worst thing about it is, is it happens the most when we get hurt. Somebody does something wrong and it hurts us deeply. And we have to walk this line of trying to forgive them but hating them and then you're just like, ah, well, I was stupid, did this, so you go back and forth. And if you don't watch out, you start mirroring the same traits that they fell to. See, the mistake is thinking that anyone is higher than someone else. The mistake is thinking that there's never a moment, I mean, that there's ever a moment when you don't need God's grace. That's the mistake. When we get off our guard and just kind of, I got it under control. I got it under control. Okay, so the, the sixth thing, uh, a false witness. I mean, you could say that, I'm sorry, I missed one. Uh, not a false witness. The fifth one, I don't know why I already said that one. What did I miss, guys? Problem maker. Oh, okay, so problem maker, I'm sorry, guys. Problem maker was for feet that rush to evil. Heart devises wicked schemes was a lover of evil. Okay, so uh, let me go back here, I'm sorry. I even numbered them to make sure that didn't happen. Okay, the first one was haughty eyes, a lying tongue, has it shed innocent blood. The fourth one was a heart that devises wicked plans, which would, could, be, could be said a lover of evil. Uh, this is someone who's selfish, self-serving, a person who puts their own first, personal gain first. Um, those who take advantage of single mothers, those who, are, uh, uh, who take advantage of others in general, this would be a good example of that. The fifth one was feet that run rapidly to evil, and that was a problem maker. I'm sorry about that. So now that we've cleared that issue up, we can go to the sixth one, which was in verse 19, a false witness. There we go. And there really is no other way of saying that. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. That context is talking more about someone who lies in court. Um, it can apply to other things. However, it's more of the context when it says a false witness in, in the books of the law or in, in, in the older Jewish literature. Um, this is very similar to a person who lies, but... It's, it has a slightly different nuance. One, for instance, is uh, someone who sells dishonestly, someone who co-signs for loans falsely. That would be a good example of that. Uh, someone who lies in court. Um, so whereas number two, a lying tongue, is someone who just um, lies about things, like maybe more of a gossip, a false witness would be more of like um, when you're selling lies, I guess you could say. Um, the two are, are very similar, though. Uh, and then the seventh one on the list, the last one on the list, in the end of verse 19, one who spreads strife among brothers. Uh, notice the, fr the phrasing there. Not just one who spreads strife, one who spreads strife among brothers. So people who tear, tear apart the closest of people. Um, now notice this contrasts directly with what Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Well, these people are making problems. They're, they're giving a false witness about these different things. Um, 
So, you know, I just want to point this out. You will actively try for unity or you will get sucked in. Either every moment of your life is going to be about making peace and acting with love, or you will slowly start heading back into getting sucked into the problem. That is something that you can, you can bank on. You can bank on it. It's going to be something that's a constant struggle. Um, so the seventh person, from verse 19, one who spreads strife among brothers, a pot stirrer. <laughs> There's no other way of saying it. I mean, they just they just can't get their fingers out of it. They just, they just oh, things are going too well. Oh, man, we're, we're getting along too well. I got to do something to cause that to stop. Um, uh, so this would be someone, a warmonger. Someone who stirs up past offenses. Well, you remember that one time ten years ago when you did this and da 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 do and make sure that you don't do that in your marriage. Make, make sure that you don't don't do that in your marriage. If it happened more than I don't know a week ago, probably just let it go. I mean, if it needs to be addressed because you're talking about something and it relates to it, I mean, whatever, work out your problem. Don't run from your problems as a, as married people. But it comes to a point when it's like, let the past die. Just just let it go. Or when you have to keep bringing up things that happen. You you started it. Yeah, I started it three years ago. Who even remembers that? Like, you see what I mean? Like, th there comes a point when you have to say, okay, all right. We're, we're both trying to work towards a common goal of helping our marriage to succeed. Sometimes you mess up. Sometimes I mess up. But we can't do this whole thing about keep going back to, to this. It's like when you're driving. You know what I mean? I'm, 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 I'm heading out of town tomorrow to Texas. And... You know, when I cross the Texas border, I'm not going to stop, turn around, and go back to New Mexico town and kind of... Remember when we went, went through that town? No, it, it's, it's gone. I'm heading on through. See what I mean? <laughs> Do the same thing with your marriages and with your relationships. Um, someone who, who lies, gossips, uh, complains, irritates on purpose, someone who spreads conflict, someone who sucks, sucks people into their conflict. These are all good ways of saying this. Um, a pot stirrer. Make sure that you're you're going out of the way to make peace, and not out of the way to cause a conflict. Um, and one thing that we do is we kind of get ourselves the righteous glasses. Well, they did this, and they're the ones who are really behind this, so I, you know, I'm innocent in this. Okay, sure you are. And uh, before we close up here, I just want to say, beware of anger and bitterness and envy and jealousy and strife. These things can cause any tower to tumble. I mean, any, any tower to tumble. Um, it's the kind of the idea that I'm the good guy, so I can. This isn't what I wanted, God. I just can't forgive them. They owe me. I deserve better. It's kind of a, an attitude that I'm, that I'm talking about more generally. I want what God hasn't given me. I want what God hasn't given me. Envy, jealousy. If God hasn't given it to you, maybe he doesn't want you to have it. When you start comparing your life to others and other things that are going on, you're just never going to find any happiness anyways. Um, causing problems and not resolving them, that kind of stuff. So just a few last things before we close out here. And I have final thought because I'm, I'm going to wrap all this up in a single short phrase. Um, you know, nowhere in the entire Bible does God give us a complete list of everything that is right and wrong. Nowhere in the Bible. Even, in the, even the law itself was not complete. Have you, have you realized that? The law itself, which was literally a book of do and do not, was not complete. And it wasn't meant to be complete. Show me in the law where it says anything about doing drugs. Show me in the law where it says uh, anything about molesting children. You're not going to find it. The law was not complete. And it was not given to be complete. To look for those incomplete things in the law is to miss the whole point of it. Right. Which is outside of the discussion for tonight. And I'm kind of already going on rabbit trails here. I'm all over the place, guys. I, I'm going to Texas tomorrow. My mind is like a rabbit, man. Like, uh, you know? I wish it was like a cheetah. Because they're fast, but man, they stay focused. I'm more like a rabbit. Have you ever tried to chase a rabbit? And then you go right and left and then over and under and that's where I'm going tonight. So let me just hurry up and wrap this thing up because I feel like I'm going to – I'm feeling another rabbit trail coming on. Here it comes. So uh, uh, don't come to God with your achievements. 
He is God, you are just a breath. And before you blink your eyes, you will die, and your body will return to the ground. Remember that God and us. Yes. Don't come to God with all your achievements and look at what I've done, God. Don't hate people and claim to love God. Don't hate people and claim to love God. That, I think I should say that one again. Don't hate people and claim to love God. It's just Amen. not. Amen. Those two things right. don't go together. Right. They don't. In that situation that I mentioned earlier about the person who caused all that, all that nonsense, here's the thing. Past all the drama and nonsense about it, I am 100% confident that I and the rest of the church leadership handled it without what am, I, what am I trying to say? We remained blameless in the situation. Amen. And that is what you should try for. You will make mistakes, but remain above blame. Do what's right. When you make a mistake, apologize for it and move on. But act in such a way where people see God by the way that you act. We stand justified by God, but that person has to still, even to this day, try to justify themselves to others to make themselves feel good. You know, I've heard, heard from, this, from that whole nonsense, you won't believe the nonsense that I've heard people say about pastor. And it's very difficult as an associate pastor to, to sit down and shut up. It's very, very difficult for me because I want to defend him. But one thing that, that James says is, is it says the righteous person doesn't defend himself. This evil person's out there railing against everybody and the righteous person, they're, they're, not, they're not refusing you. And, uh, but through all that, it, it gives me great comfort to know that as far as it comes between us and God, pastor is justified before God. And I would never say this when he was here. Ha ha, that's why I said when he's gone. <laughs> but see what I mean? So be careful when there's people... When there's people who have all these interesting little stories to tell you about pastor and all these other people, because chances are a one-sided story is just that a story. The chances are. I mean, there there are the exceptions, but that's usually not the rule. Anyways, um, so all of this in summary would be summarized right there. Be humble. Be quick to repent. Be slow to anger. Always make peace. Everywhere you go, make peace. When you're with your family, make peace. If, if, if your family is one of those families that just won't have any of it, they just try their best to stir up crap, fine, let them do whatever they want, and you just stay over here. What do you do when you have two, two dogs that won't stop biting each other? Well, you separate them. You don't keep throwing them in the same pen and say, hey, go crazy. So, you know, if you've got people who just, really, they're just going from thing to thing trying to stir the pot, let them do their thing. Don't talk fat about them. Just keep going on. Just keep going. Be, be humble, be quick to repent, slow to anger, always make peace in your family online, 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 um, at the church, when you're at the store, when you're with your friends. Don't make close friends with, poor, with people of poor character and don't excuse you and don't excuse them. That's right. You grow because God has a way that he wants us to live. And that's what we're talking about tonight. Legalism tells us, you know, to live our way. God tells us to live his way. And there's a big difference between the way that religion tells you to live your life and the way that God tells you to live your life. There's a really big difference. And uh, so just remember all those things, every single one of them. There is a quiz, and it's next week, so I will give you all week to study for it. But uh, you have to get a score of higher than 95%, or you'll be taken out back and shot. Legalist. You <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but seriously, we got uh, on Wednesday. We've got uh, Lauren's going to be teaching in there. I have no idea what she's talking about, so I won't tell you what she's talking about. So there. There you go. Um, next Sunday morning, Pastor's going to be starting a new series on drum roll. I'm not telling you either because I don't know. Uh, and next Sunday night, I will be finishing uh, our talk on religion versus God, which everybody said, thank God. Now we can get back to Chuck. No. And, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, but we're going to go ahead and stop there. There's nothing else for me to say, so I'm not going to say anything else. Uh, can I have, uh, you.